Good morning. 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 Good morning.
and to the next level. And I'm also happy that Fabrizio Hochschild is uh, here with us. He is uh, very, you know, is now nominated by the Secretary General uh, to prepare the 75th anniversary of the United Nations in October next year. And, you know, one of the recommendations of the high level panel is that, you know, the international community, um, you know, agrees on something. And what this something could be, uh, Fabrizio will tell us now uh, with some, some words. And we hope that with this book, uh, we, um, uh, make, uh, we have an impact on uh, what will be the outcome in October 2020. Fabrizio, thank you. Uh, th thank you very much. And it's, uh, it's a great pleasure to, to be here at I, what I think is going to be the largest uh, IGF uh, ever, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and uh, it's a pleasure to, to share the podium here with, with Vint Cerf, who is one of our most distinguished high-level panel members, um, as well as with Max and Wolfgang and my other um, co-panelists. Co um, I, I had the opportunity last night to peruse the book and found it tremendously inspiring and encouraging, and I think it's, it's a huge achievement. I think it really represents the state of play of internet governance today and the diverse uh, perspectives. Um, and the fact that the, the report of the panel was taken as a, as a baseline, I think is very, very uh, encouraging. Reading the book, I, I was struck by uh, two sort of contradictory uh, messages. One is that the, the sense that pervades the book of the need for greater governance, universal governance, to maintain the universal nature of the internet. But two, the huge complexity of that task. And I think the fundamental problem we face, uh, if, if, if I can, if you'll forgive me for a huge oversimplification, is that in the development of the internet, the engineers and thinkers behind it have never been daunted by the complexity. If anything, they've risen to the challenge and they've moved forward through trial and error, and through error and error and trial and error. Uh, and sometimes, you know, to quote um, uh, the Facebook founder, move forward and broken things, but it's not stopped them. On the other hand, the same complexity when it comes to policymakers has basically meant they've become frozen um, and stuck. Uh, and sort of thrown their hands up uh, a bit in the air. Um, and I think that attitude has led to, to a, an absence of, um, of, of governance. Uh, I, I mean, in, in 2014, at Neb Mundial, um, two prominent uh, platform founders were still referring to the internet as a totally ungoverned space, and that's only five years ago. Um, and but by that time, the internet had already been around for 45 years. Um, so I think today it's different. There are multiple initiatives, but I think the multiplicity initiatives, many of which are in the annex of the book and referred to in the book, um, is an indication both of the desire, but also the failure to achieve something more universal. And I think many argue in the book that if we really want to stop, maintain the internet, as a free, open, uh, and global um, phenomena, achievement, uh, the uni having universal um, uh, approaches to governance, even if they can have regional or national uh, manifestations, having some basic principles adopted and pursued globally is of vital importance. And that, I think, is the added value of the United Nations. And that is where the United Nations can help as the only truly universal institution. But of course, as the high-level panel makes clear, multilateralism has to be complemented by a multi-stakeholder approach. And we need not just universality in terms of all governments, but also universality in terms of bringing in the business community and bringing in um, civil society. And that, I think, is the challenge. There's no easy formula for it. Um, but I think that the reflections in the book are a very good starting point, um, and we will do our utmost as part of the UN 75 um, 
effort and building on what comes out of this IGF, building on what comes out of the panel, building out of the many contributions in this book um, to work towards the articulation of some universal principles. And we'll see how far we get. But how far we get will also depend very much on the efforts of all stakeholders. And your support will be critical. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fabrizio. And, you know, 50 years ago, uh, there was not yet the internet. We had connections among four computers, if I remember. No, just oh, two. just two. <laughs> and then in December, we had four computers. It was Santa Barbara, Utah, UCLA, and Stanford. So, and then you jumped in with the idea a couple of years later uh, with the um, TCP IP protocol. And this uh, was the starting point for the explosion, uh, Wind. Uh, how do you see it today? And you know, what is your reflection? You have been a member of the high level panel, uh, you have been also a member of the Global Commission on Stability in Cyberspace, looking into the 2020s. You know, what is your recommendation to the next generation? So thank you very much, Wolfgang, and uh, it's a real pleasure to be part of this uh, book announcement. Uh, first of all, uh, I think that uh, we should adopt uh, a Latin phrase uh, to explain what it is we're trying to accomplish. Now, you know that in America, on our money, it says e pluribus unum, which means out of many, one. I think that ours, I don't know the right Latin for this, someone will. Uh, our motto should be out of chaos, order. And that's precisely what we're looking for. Think about a kaleidoscope for a moment. If you ever looked in one of those, it is chaotic bits and pieces of uh, colored glass and the like, and yet you see order coming out of that. It's done with mirrors. Uh, so it may very well be that there is a mirror trick that we can perform on this chaotic environment we're in to create some order. Second observation I would make about the planet we live on is that when you get far enough away, you don't see uh, any of the boundaries at all. You just see this blue dot. And I think we should keep that in mind, that the internet is something which is like the planet. It's the only net we have, and it's the one we want to keep. It's the one that covers the planet. So from my point of view, as we get closer and closer to the planet, we'll see some of the underlying structure that makes this system co you know, collaborative and cooperative and effective. But it's going to take significant effort for us to do that. The last thing I have to say, which is truly ironic, is that in a system which is all about being online and all about being digital, we produced a dead tree. Uh, but there's something comforting about the physical reality of the words in this book. And so that's why it was important to construct it this way. Thank you so much, um, Wind. And indeed, the book is always uh, also available online as a, a PDF, free for you to share. And uh, we will get to um, uh, some tweets from um, uh, the, some of the contributors that um, uh, were prepared already. But you're very welcome to start to uh, tweet about the book and about the conversation that we are having at Next Gen IG, as in Next Generation Internet Governance. The, the two comments that you just made, um, I, I cannot resist to, to share that there was an um, original Internet Governance uh, definition that was really only about the technology, about the namespace, about all of that. And it was really the VISIS, the World Summit on the Information Society, where many of us actually met for the first time. Um, uh, years and years ago, and that added the, um, the human perspective, the United Nations aspect of it. And I would say it's about the, the drama, really, that makes us human, that makes this internet governance so goddamn difficult. Because the technology, as Vint can attest, you know, you can see, is it working, is it not working? Once you get uh, the human side involved, and that's in fact why I chose um, to uh, do my PhD in philosophy rather than continue as a technologist, because those questions questions are what makes us um, really enjoy our lives and work together in a good way. It's my pleasure to pass it to uh, Matthias Kettemann, who um, will share a few words about um, the editorial of the piece where um, Wolfgang, um, Matthias and I were trying to um, get the conversation started about the next steps. 
Absolutely. So um, thank you very much for coming here. Uh, and Vince, on your Latin question, I've had the honor to study Latin for six years. So it would be ordo ex cao, so order out of chaos, or ex cao ordo. You could have it both ways, just like with internet governance, you know. Um, you can approach the same issue from so many different perspectives. And as Max uh, mentioned, it is so important to bring together bring together uh, philosophy, law, a actually any, any approach that brings normativity to it. Because through normativity, we can develop a, a global society. And there's no uh, bigger issue facing global society today than to sustainably develop. And the internet has a huge role to play in that. We, um, in our... Um, in our thoughts uh, on the high-level uh, report, uh, developed on some of the uh, issues mentioned there, we've um, identified four uh, key areas which we believe are really important to follow up on. They're related to the rights and responsibilities uh, of uh, states and other stakeholders, the importance of sustainable uh, digital uh, development, uh, with um, development being both a, a, a goal of, the, uh, in, of internet governance and an important means. Um, we also believe that we need to talk more about how to achieve and ensure cyber peace in the broadest sense. Peace as a possibility to realize your human potential in a, uh, in a setting free from fear. And uh, the fourth aspect was a stronger, uh, a stronger discussion, uh, normative discussion on AI stewardship. We have so many ethical guidelines by now. We really need to take that one step further and to uh, follow up on, uh, on the commitments which uh, we do have. And we believe that uh, the IJF can play an important role in this um, ecosystem by uh, identifying the issues, by uh, framing the challenges, by documenting what has been achieved and by uh, reporting back to the community. And this is why we're so happy to start the IGF here with this session, because we think that this can be a frame through which to see the coming days. Thank you, Matthias. I think those who um, are um, uh, used to um, work in the United Nations context will recognize that this very much matches the three classic baskets of uh, rights uh, economic development and security. We added a fourth, and AI is really just an example for the emerging technologies for how do we steer the um, new inventions that are being added to the mix. Um, this is um, uh, just a number of, of questions that we think are, um, help us have that conversation. We are at the very beginning of a long journey, so um, I don't think we have the answers yet, but if we can agree on the right questions, then we can organize um, our groups and uh, activities in that space, and we will make the slides and the questions available afterwards, too. So, um, as said, this is a long journey. We, we think 10 years is about as far as um, we humans can um, realistically look forward. And uh, luckily, the United Nations uh, is an organization that uh, thinks in these uh, dimensions. And hence, there are some milestones that um, uh, I think we can project and look towards. Um, in particular, the WISIS Plus 20 event that um, will happen at, uh, 2025 might be an excellent moment to um, see how far we have gotten. Obviously, the IGF right now is an important uh, moment to kick this conversation off. Um, it will be, uh, or there will be a, a point just before the next IGF, most likely, the 75th anniversary of the United Nations that was mentioned before. I think that, again, can help set the stage for the conversations that will happen in the next 10 years. And with that, um, we really want to come to um, the, the contributors. And um, Vint has kindly um, prepared a, a tweet um, that, um, Vint, do you want to uh, comment on it? I'll be happy to, thank you. I never pass up an open microphone. Uh, <laughs> in another life, I was probably a politician. Uh, so, so it, when you think about um, how complex this environment has become, and uh, as it has become more accessible to uh, the general population, we've been challenged um, by the fact that this basic infrastructure can, can both be used and abused, and we're seeing both of those phenomena at the same time. 
So our big challenge from my point of view is how to uh, impose some kind of safe order on the system without uh, stifling uh, the freedom of expression, freedom of access to information, and permissionless innovation. So how do we establish a framework that will work on a global scale that can be implemented uh, in the Westphalian sense among the various nations that are part of the uh, UN system and at the same time preserve all of the freedoms that we've enjoyed that have allowed the internet to be a tool for rapid advancement of knowledge. And so that's the challenge that we have and I'm glad to know that there are some milestones between now and 2030 where we can pause and reflect on how well or how poorly we have accomplished that objective. So I am looking forward to those milestones. Um, thank you, Wint. And I encourage, by the way, everybody to tweet and to comment uh, on this. So we want to fill uh, the various baskets with a lot of ideas. And as I said in the, in the opening, the Internet has no final solutions. It has different perspectives. And this network of opinions will drive us forward into the year 2030. And I remember a speech uh, by the former president, Bill Clinton, when and he addressed an ICANN meeting in San Francisco, and he said, internet governance is like stumbling forward. So we are always doing the next stumbling step, and probably we have 10 stumbling steps until the year 2030, but uh, here we are in the two, uh, year 2019, and the next stumbling step will lead us in the year in the year 2020. And so I think the best thing is to go through now uh, a number of uh, the contributors to the book and so to get uh, short reflections from them. And I start with ladies first and Andrietta on the left side, uh, probably you can just summarize your ideas, you know, in uh, two minutes. Um, thank you, Wolfgang. Um, and thank you for um, doing this book and forcing people like myself to put my thoughts to paper, which I don't always do. I think, yes, we do need a global framework, but I, as I said in my chapter, we also need to not assume that all internet governance challenges can be solved by internet governance solutions. Um, social inequality is at the root of digital exclusion, and we're not going to deal with digital exclusion um, if we just look at digital inclusion, we need to look at the underlying factors um, that, 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 that results in, in um, exclusion. And I think um, equality and the growing income gaps, for example, in many parts of the world, these are challenges that we need to not uh, solve through internet governance, but integrate in our thinking about internet governance. And, and then as I also, I think the idea that, as, as uh, Fabrizio also pointed out, this relationship between multilateral and multi-stakeholder, we need to engage that in a different way. It has been the subject of political horse trading, competition, tension and conflict, and we just simply need to, to move beyond that. And um, multilateral processes need to be more inclusive and accountable. And multi-stakeholder processes need to be more inclusive and accountable. Um, and, and then I think finally what I, I you know, talking about um, governance and more regulation, I think, yes, we need to look at that. I think as with, you know, we, we tend to have a short memory. Um, but look at other major industries, like the extractive industry, for example, that started in the 19th century, maybe even 18th century, um, caused massive destruction in many parts of the world, but it also brought massive innovation and positive changes. But business models that were based on cheap labor, for example, I come from South Africa, the mining industry was developed on expropriating land so that people were forced to work in the mines, and that model was fundamentally problematic and needed to be changed. And I think we need to also be open to confronting where business models that were innovative and exciting um, 10 years ago and that brought human rights advantages 10 years ago might need to be re-examined now from the perspective of the potential harm. And I think we need to be very careful about not regulating users. Humans 
do bad things. Humans do good things. We're not going to stop the internet from having harmful impacts by regulating the users. What we need to do is try and create a fair level playing ground with some common principles. And just to, to say what the challenges are there, I think regulating internet companies is very challenging, partly because they are also internet champions. Um, so that conversation about how to regulate those business models, which are also the business models that have produced the innovation that, that brought us together, that's particularly challenging. It's not going to be an easy conversation. And then I think what makes that even more challenging is that trusting governments to do that is very difficult at this point in time when so many governments shut down the internet, when there's an election, when they think students are, are cheating on their exams. So I'm making that point because, yes, I agree with what was said about more governance, as Fabrizio pointed out, but we need to have that, that context of trust and confidence and the accountability um, um, and commitment to promoting and protecting human rights um, of those processes if we're going to, to let that happen and be part of that happening. If I may point out, thank you, Andrea, that's wonderful. There's a, um, a contribution by Jonathan Zittren in the book, and he points out exactly what you just described, that originally the, there was a um, framework of rights that was approached on the internet, and now in a new phase, it's a framework of harms, and I think it's a, it's a very uh, astute observation. Thank you, Andrea, and uh, you know, I did not introduce her for people who don't know her. Normally, she doesn't need introduction, but she was the president of of the Association for Progressive Communication headquartered in uh, South Africa, and it's one of the largest civil society organizations in the world in this field. And let's go now to uh, Jörg Schweiger. He is the CEO of DENIC, which is the uh, country con code top-level domain for Germany, .de, with 16 million uh, registrations. And uh, uh, he comes from the host country, Jörg. Yeah, thank you very much, Wolfgang. Um, yet another panel and report. This is what I thought in the first place when I heard about the panel, and it proved me wrong. It not only proved me wrong because it gave very on-spot analysis of the current challenges we are facing, but also very good examples on how internet governance on and off the internet should and actually does work. More than that, they provided an approach on how internet governance regimes or processes could be um, shaped in the future and how we could really achieve tangible results like, for example, with an IGF+. Plus. But I think the, the most prominent thing for me, and if I would like to highlight one, then it is the proposed concept of soft governance. So given in a world where we have a global internet, where we have a lot of different jurisdictional frameworks, where a lot of cultures do exist, then soft governance where we, where we use standards, where we use values and principles to build on, I think that is really the way forward. And by the way, this way forward, I think the foundation to that has already been laid. It's been laid by Net Mundial. But where on Net Mundial, there has not been a follow up on now, with that panel and given the panelists and given the mandate by the UN Secretary General, this might be a very good opportunity to really uh, make some sustainable involvements to an open, free, single-rooted and secure internet. Thank you, Jörg. And next is... Uh 
uh, Chris Painter, who was the coordinator for cybersecurity in the U.S. State Department. By the way, he invented this job. And, you know, this was used as a model for many, many other governments, now 50 plus or something like that. So in the last couple of years, he joined us in the Global Commission on Stability in Cyberspace, he, uh, where he was a commissioner. And he's also now chair of the board of the Global Forum uh, of uh, Cyber Expertise in The Hague. So, uh, Chris, thank you for your contribution to the book, and uh, we would listen to you and some reflections about the future. Well, uh, thank you, and it's, it's great to be here, and it's great to be another IGF. Um, you know, Vint, when you started saying you were going to come up with a Latin phrase, I was a little worried because we only hear one Latin phrase in the U.S. right now, and I won't <laughs> go into what that is. Um, and, and I also appreciate that we have a paper copy of this book because my brother is a online used book dealer. And so he, he berates me every time I read anything digitally and says, you know, the look and feel of a book is really important. So we have that. Um, it, the point I was making in this and the point I made in this article in part was, look, we are the cyber, cyber internet cognoscenti in this room. We are the, we're preaching to our own choir. This is an important event when we come together. It's a bigger event every year, that's great. It's a more inclusive event every year, that's also really good. But either in the internet or the cyber community, we are somewhat of an insular group. And the worry I have is this needs to be a national and international priority. And you know, some of the work that's been done in the UN high-level panel has helped this. Uh, when, I, when I was the first cyber diplomat in the world, and now we have 35 of them around the world, that makes it more of a policy issue. But too often, I think, senior decision makers in governments don't think about this as a, as a major policy issue. They think about a lot of other things. And this is part of the fabric of our economic growth, our national security, our human rights, our foreign policy. Uh, and it has to be treated that way and not treated as a separate technical issue, which too often it is. And, and the second thing um, is that this can't be done in these bifurcated communities. You know, when I was at state, I was the coordinator for cyber issues, not for cybersecurity, because we were talking about human rights issues, economic issues, and security issues, and you have to look at those all together. And I think one of the challenges we have is that too often those communities go off and talk among themselves and not together. Uh, and again, I think this is an opportunity both uh, for the UN's activities, but also for the IGF. The IGF traditionally had drawn more of the communications people, the internet you know, technical governance people, Increasingly, it's getting those other communities of security and other communities in, like on the stability issues that we dealt with. But we need to do that more. We need to have a more inclusive setting where we bring those security people, those ministers of foreign affairs and others, and people from those communities in, because that's the only way we're going to end up with really good solutions. Thank you so much. And of course, you um, uh, said the, the right words. We do want to bring you in. So um, if anybody, um, especially um, uh, women, want to come in and, uh, and uh, you know, um, uh, to make this a bit more diverse, um, it's always a challenge. Um, al allow me um, some quick words about uh, next steps, because as we said, this is the beginning. So um, one uh, tiny step is that uh, we did put all the uh, contributions on a website um, on nextgenig.org, and you're more than welcome to, to spread that. There's our contacts on there, and um, we don't know exactly how to bootstrap the community, but um, uh, this is exactly what we want to find out with you together. Um, there is an um, intgovwiki.org where, um, in contrast to the um, official IGF website, which is, of course, uh, organized by the United Nations, this wiki is really open for all of you to edit the same as Wikipedia so we can um, collaborate and uh, discuss how to take things forward. The book is available there as well. And then um, in the closing ceremony, there is an open mic. And I think this is really the moment when uh, we should have a conversation about what is going to happen in uh, the future. And I uh, very much want to invite you all to use that closing ceremony as a, a moment to get together and think about the upcoming year. Um, and with that, I would love to um, bring it in, uh, bring in the audience. Um, I see a number of authors from the book there. And please, you know, raise your hand and make some uh, comments. <laughs> Thanks. Um, uh, interested to read the book, and it's great to see Henriette up here and so many um, internet luminaries. But that throwaway comment that it's hard to find women is shocking 10 years in. 
So I hope that we can stop saying things like that because there are communities that have been working on this. You know, many of the people up there, Chris, Henriette, know tons of women from a variety of backgrounds that could be helpful to this. And I think if we're talking about, I think the multi-stakeholder dimension is very important. We now, it's now its own ism, but we have to be thinking about that along all of you know, these different verticals, not just different stakeholder groups, but gender, identity, uh, race, ethnicity, language, all of this. And I know that many of the people up there think about this, but it's so disappointing to be at, in 2019, at a panel like this with all white men, <laughs> except for Henriette. I'm sorry. I, I forgot to say, just to comment on that. Um, the uh, book itself, if you read the contributions, it's much more diverse. Uh, physical presence here is, of course, unfortunately uh, uh, It was an challenged. invitation. Exactly. And those so we were the invited everybody. Who responded. Can I, I just want to jump in as a, as a male ally on this. I mean, I just walked in the room and I was like, no, this is, there's no excuse for this today. There's no excuse for it ever. But like to have, when you talk about next generation IG, and I'm a contributor to this book, to walk in the room and have, you know, like eight white 40 or 50 year old men, you know, it's just the irony is just astounding and it should have been picked up. Point well taken. Hello, Antoine, I'm with Mission Public. Um, so I have, you, you've been talking about trust and inclusion and um, the 2030s, and I'm a bit uh, wondering, uh, you are uh, talking about all communities, one is missing and these are the citizens, so the, the 7 billion people that are using internet, and um, I'm talking here in confidence because I know that many of you in this room are working on exactly that with us. So my question is, where are the citizens in that process and how to engage them in that discussion? Because at the end, if we want to build trust and if we want to build the next generation internet, we need the people around the world and the people that are not connected. And that uh, is my question. But we have some answer already with you working on uh, including ordinary citizens too. And this is Antoine Wersch from Mission Publique, who is indeed organizing citizen participation and deliberation um, uh, workshops around the world. Um, we kind of took the traditional uh, view because it's difficult to have a lot of people uh, speak in a, in a book. We can try next time. This time it had civil society contributors from uh, a variety of spaces. Anybody else wants to uh, come in? I think then we might be uh, just in time to uh, close a little early, but um, Wolfgang, Matthias, do you want to um, say some final words? Uh, Andrea, do you want to come in? Um, firstly, absolutely, Courtney, and with, with all respect um, to, to, the, to the, and I know it wasn't intentional, but I think it's even more important to, to make these panels diverse, but to, to, I think what is really important is not to assume that it's hard to achieve diversity. I think there's a tendency to do that, and that tendency, in a way, for me, is even more concerning than, than, than having a um, lack of diversity, because the diversity is there. One just needs to be open to it. To respond to the citizen participation question, I think it's an interesting question, because I think one of the challenges that we have in the world of internet governance, I see Betha and Paul here from the Internet Jurisdiction Project, is how to be innovative how to, to take on board the fact that the internet is global and cross-border um, and respect that and build on that, while at the same time strengthening rule of law, um, uh, using and reinforcing existing international human rights standards, for example, in existing understandings, normativity, to use your term, about accountability and good governance and transparency. So I think citizen participation is very important, but I, th I would say it should be approached in a way that, that strengthens participation also at the ground level, at local, at village level, government, local government level, national government level, at the relationship between companies and consumers, between citizens and states at the national level. I think what we can do with this global citizenship that we have through the internet is find ways of, of, of advocating 
for, for, for more accountable, inclusive governance at other levels. I don't think we can just citizen participate in the governance of the internet, but we can use our citizen participation in the internet to strengthen governance and accountability and participation of people in decisions that affect them at all levels. Thank you, Henrietta. And if we talk about the next generation internet, we're talking about also about the next generation of leaders. You know, uh, and uh, we have, I, I have heard the message from the, from the audience. Uh, I'm organizing since 15 years a summer school on internet governance. And in the last summer school, we had 60% uh, women and 40% uh, from them were from uh, Africa and Asia and Latin American countries. So this is the future. We have outlined now a 10-year plan until the year 2030. And I hope that uh, a panel in 2025 or 2020 uh, 30 will reflect uh, exactly what has been criticized here that we have an unbalanced panel so it's an, a permanent struggle uh, to rebalance imbalances which emerge also in the process so I can only invite you in, in particular the women in the room and people from uh, third world countries uh, to, um, to so called underrepresented regions to take their voice in the sessions which are ahead of us in this ITF as Max has said, you know, there is a great opportunity in the closing session uh, to say what you want uh, to, uh, that is on the agenda for the 2020s and probably the book can serve as a source of inspiration. So take this not as the final answer, take this as an inspiration so, and to move forward. It's in your hands and you are the next generation who have to make the internet better. It's good, but it can be better. And with this, you know, I... Uh, uh, give the micro to Wind because he cannot resist any micro. And all th uh, good are uh, three things. And for the third time, the closing remarks should be uh, coming from you. Well, thank you very much for that uh, opportunity and honor. I want to draw attention to uh, Bertrand de la Chapelle, who's in the audience here, who's been running the Internet and Jurisdiction um, program for quite some time now. Uh, I draw that attention because it, when we build internet, it's an engineering activity, and it's pretty easy to tell whether it works or it doesn't work. But when we start talking about um, governance, it's a much more complicated thing. And yet, in some sense, it still has to work. And so our task, I think, it's laid out in this book and in the discussions today, is to figure out how to make internet governance work in a way that produces the outcome we want, which is an open environment in which we all benefit from the power of computing and the brains that make up the humans on this planet. And now it's really the, the moment to thank Wolfgang, without whom this book would have never happened. I think um, he wrote to more than 400 people and maintained an incredible amount of editing and uh, an organization. Thank you, Wolfgang. You're really the, the um, man who made this happen. Thank you. To a great IGF. The session is closed. Yeah.